2016, I think for a lot of people was, oh, shit, you know, the Russians are infiltrating our political establishment and they're spying on us and they're doing things to destabilize this country. Nothing new under the sun there. Um, you know, the extent to which they've done this going back, I mean, at that point, uh, almost 100 years was pretty well documented. Right at the moment when Russia was at its weakest. The Soviet Union had collapsed. The intelligence services were kind of in pieces on the floor. A lot of veterans from the KGB and the GRU were being rendered unemployed or they had retired or whatever, looking to make money, working for oligarchs or being farmed out to organized crime, whatever. But a decision was taken around 1993, 1994 to reconstitute uh, the nature of psychological warfare as prosecuted by the GRU. And at that time, they decided they are no longer going to just draw a distinction between peacetime and wartime. They will use all instruments at their disposal, which is to say all state institutions, but also, and here's where it gets really interesting, civil society organizations, sports clubs, diaspora organizations, anything in Russian society, both inside Russia and outside Russia, with ties to Moscow, can be seconded to essentially conduct disinformation and propaganda campaigns, uh, weaken Western political resolve, social cohesion, all the kinds of things you saw in 2016. And, you know, you mentioned the hacking of the DNC. Yeah, that was GRU. Um, but beyond that, and, you know, th the extent to which this had a material impact on the election is something that'll be studied for decades and nobody's ever going to come to a firm conclusion about it. But Yevgeny Prigozhin's troll farm in St. Petersburg now it is, I think, beyond dispute, Wagner, but also the entire Prigozhin Empire yeah. was carried aloft. Well, as Putin himself admitted after Prigozhin conducted his abortive mutiny or coup in last summer, completely financed by the Russian state. But also it's a cutout. It's, it's mm -hmm. an instrument. It's a tool of the GRU, mm -hmm. a plausibly deniable private military company stroke um, information technology company but really that, that prosecutes Russia's military campaigns, not just against the United States or right. France or Germany, but also, I mean, Africa, it's probably their biggest portfolio. We have a hard time reckoning with just how, how sort of messed up and deteriorating our own society is, and, and certainly our own politics is, um, that we like to pretend it's the Russians all the time, when really, a lot of the time, the Russians can't believe their luck because all they have to do is just hold up a mirror to ourselves and show us yeah. ourselves. And yeah. it may be a funhouse mirror, there may be some distortion and some caricature, but, you know, we are creating the problem. They're just, I, I liken them to, you know, like, watching lemmings run off a cliff. The Russians are the guys at the precipice of the cliff holding up signs, say, keep going, keep going, you're almost there. You know, they, they, they want us to commit yeah. kind of collective suicide in this. Out of the ledger, because a lot of people were declaring victory after the Mueller report, um, which by the way, was pretty light on counterintelligence. Remember that the two yes. Very, missions yeah. Mueller were conspiracy, and obstruction of justice. The Senate Subcommittee on Intelligence reports, either five volumes, much more substantive, much more in depth, and much more interesting. But I'll say this I mentioned Venona. What the US government or the intelligence community knew about Soviet agents in the State Department, the Treasury Department, or you know, low level bureaucracies in real time, but could not prove publicly because to bring these people to book, would out the existence of the Venona project, which was so sensitive and so high value that they would rather let Soviet spies get away with being Soviet spies than 
compromise their intelligence collecting mechanism. Wow. Nothing has changed. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a reason a lot of people end up getting indicted for lying to the FBI, mm -hmm. which is a low order offense. It's an offense to be sure, but it's a low order offense compared to other things the FBI might have on those people. Um, but yeah, we have in this country, I would say, a host of people who, you know, they, they, they've, they've, in, 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 they've convinced themselves that because, quote unquote, Russiagate was a big hoax or a conspiracy theory uh, and that, you know, Mueller himself did not frog march Donald Trump out of the Oval Office in handcuffs and accuse him of being a Russian spy and then, you know, pull back a curtain and Boris and Natasha are there in handcuffs and Boris is twirling his mustache and Natasha is speaking in some cartoonish fashion. <laughs> no, seriously, this is what people were expecting. Right. Because they don't know right. how counterintelligence works. They don't know how law enforcement works. They don't know how espionage works. True. Because none of this happened, they've now convinced themselves that Russia has been exonerated of all malevolence and, and, and wrongdoing, that they didn't interfere in the election in any way, that if Putin invaded Ukraine, that too was the fault of the CIA and the State Department. And Russia is the victim rather than the perpetrator. Now, this is a great success, an accidental one for Moscow, because again, I think they interfered with the election with an eye toward muddying the waters, uh, weakening Hillary Clinton, creating division and polarization. Did they think that they would actually succeed or did they think that their dark horse candidate would win the presidency? Maybe not, but the fact that he did and the fact that we began litigating the extent to which his presidency is the result of a foreign intervention was a gift to the Russians because now they look like they can control America's political establishment, whether or not they can. I mean, I would argue they cannot, but we are doing our utmost to give them a lot of props and a lot of credibility. Wow. Um, and, you know, I mean, right now what you're seeing is America's tearing itself apart the fact that Donald Trump has at least a 50% chance of regaining the White House is absolutely terrifying to somebody like myself and to our European friends. But to Russia, they, are, they cannot believe their good fortune. So what are they going to do? Again, they're going to amplify people who are already predisposed to supporting. It's not even that they're pro-Putin and pro-Russia. Some of them are. Some of them have legitimately drunk the Kool-Aid that Putin is this sort of bastion of religious conservatism. I mean, he's literally built himself a $1.5 billion Kublai Khan pleasure dome on the Black Sea mm -hmm. with stripper poles. I mean, this is the most, you know, like if this guy were in an 80s movie, he'd be in the backseat of the limo, getting blowjobs, snorting lines of coke off cross. <laughs> he is as conservative as Larry Flint was conservative. Right? <laughs> but you have people who legitimately think that this guy is, you know, he stands for everything that they want to believe in. You know, ultra patriotism, orthodoxy, blah, blah, blah. Fine. So they're not very bright or they haven't bothered to interrogate the issue. Um, but then you have people who just, they have such disdain for their own country. These Zoomer morons are reading bin Laden's letter to America from 20, 2001 and saying, this is the most eye-opening thing I've ever seen. It does scare me a little bit because we've now entered into... I've heard it called the post-truth age. I would just call it a very kind of um, nihilistic moment in American history, to be sure, also probably international history, where you don't have to uh, you don't have to hide the worst of yourself. All of your your venality, your vindictiveness, your murderous rage, all of the things you would try to cover up if, for instance, you were the Soviet Union. There's no famine here. Our, our gulags are models of re-education and rehabilitation. All of these things, you spend a great deal of energy trying to uh, obfuscate. Now, you don't do that anymore. You lean into it. Yeah, I'm, I'm a piece of shit. I want to go out and kill people with AR-15s for the lulls because it's funny because it, I own the libs by doing that. The salesmanship is... It's, it's all negative. It's not, there's no positive prescription anymore. With MAGA, what does MAGA want to build? They, 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 you know, they sometimes talk about, you know, more jobs here, secure the borders, make America great again, literally the slogan. How do you want to make America great again? Everything you are advocating is some form of violent destruction. You want to destroy American institutions, 
you want to put people in prison because you don't like what they write about you in the newspaper. Um, you don't want to save countries from acts of aggression, if not full scale wars of conquest. In fact, you're going to egg on countries like Russia to invade your putative allies. It's all just tear it apart. So we all we, we kind of sit there and laugh and say, you know, not exactly James Bond style espionage, but they still managed to turn a cathedral city into a kind of no go area for the space of several weeks. They still killed an innocent bystander, Don Sturgis. Um, and we also are still piecing together operations perpetrated by GRU Unit 29155, the unit to which uh, Mishkin and Chapiga belonged. We're, we're piecing these things together a decade after the fact. Nearly four years now, you have had an administration which, instead of pulling its thumb, has rolled up its sleeves. And I can assure you that we will keep our sleeves rolled up. We had to struggle with the old enemies of peace, business and financial monopoly, speculation, reckless banking, class antagonism, sectionalism, war profiteering. They had begun to consider the government of the United States as a mere appendage to their own affairs. And we know now that government by organized money is just as dangerous as government by organized mob. Never before in all our history have these forces been so united against one candidate as they stand today. They are unanimous in their hate for me, and I welcome their hatred. I should like to have it said of my first administration that in it, the forces of selfishness and of lust for power met their match. I should like to have it said, wait a minute, I should like to have it said of my second administration that in it, these forces met their master. <laughs>